So, Paradox Pokemon are a very interesting concept introduced in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet that are Pokemon that are different species that just very closely resemble previous Pokemon that we all know and love. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you where you can catch every single Paradox Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. The first disclaimer I will give is that in order to have access to the Paradox Pokemon, you have to have defeated the main three storylines the St Operation Starfall, the Titan Quest, as well as the Champion League. Once you do that, Arvin will call you and some friends to go start out on a new story quest called The Way Home. This story quest is what you will need to complete in order to have access to Paradox Pokemon. Now that we've established that, we can get into where you can find the Paradox Pokemon. First thing you need to do is teleport to the Zero Gate, as all of the Paradox Pokemon can be found within the Zero Point. Once you have made it to the zero gate, you will go in this door. Then you can teleport to this, which will take you to the separate research stations once you have unlocked them. For this, we'll start out at research station one. First, we will be looking at the Scarlet Paradox forms. I will have video chapters down in the bottom. That way you can skip to whether you want the Scarlet ones or the Violet ones. In Scarlet, once you're at this first research point, you will, you should be able to see Paradox Pokemon fairly easily from this point. I don't know why none have spawned yet for me. Oh, there is one already. Once you step out, you're able to access Pokemon such as Slither Wing, the Volcarona Paradox form. I'm just going to start out by quick balling it, just hopefully that way it'll make it easier on me to catch these things. Because they can be quite annoying at times to try and catch. Okay, and there we go. After a little bit of time spent catching, we're able to get Slitherwing, and this this top area up here is actually where you can find quite a few of the Paradox Pokemon, just kind of roaming around. Um, the next one that I'll show you is Scream Tail, because I was able to see that in the background, if it's still here. Okay, well, I swear there was one over here, I don't know where it went, but I'll come back to you when there's another one about. Because they should just be walking around here at any point. There is one. There we go. You can see the Jigglypuff Paradox form. Which, if you know me, I was... You can probably guess that I was pretty excited for it. You know, I, I kind of like Jigglypuff. So I was, I was pretty happy when I found out about this. I just like Jigglypuff a little bit though. Not a whole lot. This is where you can find Screamtail. Similar place as Slitherwing, just kind of roaming around in this grassy area. They're very easy to find. Okay. Luckily for me, Screamtail decided to put itself to sleep, so it made catching it a little bit easier for me. And that is two of the Paradox Pokemon found. As well as a Corviknight that decided to spawn on top of me. Thank you very much. Now, where I'm going to want you to go next is come back to this place and step back on the teleport pad. From here we will go to research station 2 where we will find our where we should be able to find our next pokemon. If you look over here, you will see this massive rock wall outside of the well, I guess also brute bonnet can just spawn everywhere around here. We'll get back to that other one after I show you brute bonnet. So, here it is. It is the Amoongus one, it is a grass and dark type, which you can just kind of find anywhere out and about. Similarly to the Slitherwing and Screamtail in this grassy area. And now that Brute Bonnet has been captured, I'm going to sh show you what I actually came here to show. <laughs> that just happened to be a good coincidence that Brute Bonnet happened to show up. But this is, I guess, is also a really good place to find Brute Bonnet. As you can see, multiple of them spawned right here. Now, if you walk towards this little rock area, there is a chance of one of the Paradox Pokemon showing up. Um, not always going to happen. It's an uncommon spawn. So what you're going to need to do is just kind of run around, despawn what's over there, turn back around, recheck what spawns, and so on and so forth until you eventually find it. There we go. We finally got it to spawn after a few minutes of running around. But here you can find Sandy Shocks, the Magneton form that actually starting to grow on me. It, it looks, it, it really does have personality in its design. The more that I see it like in game. And there we go. That is Sandy Shocks caught. 
Once again, it's this rocky area right near the second research station. It's an uncommon, uncommon spawn, so you'll just kind of have to run around until you eventually get it to spawn. But after a little bit of time, you should be able to get it. We are going to head over towards this research station. That way we can enter another area where we can find another kind of hidden Pokemon. This should be research station three, but, oh, okay. Floet decides to run into us, that's wonderful. I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna continue the tutorial. Don't worry, Floet. <laughs> you should be able to see the entrance to the great, the deeper part of the great ca cavern. Ca Wait, that's a shiny. Yo, that's a shiny. What? Okay, um. Uh, just live shiny on on camera. Okay, let's go hype hype uh, uh, I'm just gonna try and quick ball it cuz the yellow and blue works well with this That's another thing I kind of want to mention about down here shiny rates seem to be increased at least That's what I'm hearing a lot. I'm hearing a lot of people talk about them finding shinies a lot more often down here and at first, I wasn't really believing it, but considering the fact that I don't have anything boosting my odds down here, and this is just a random Draegor... Gra the Pokemon? I'm just gonna stop failing to say its name. He's getting thrown on the team for now. Uh, I think that it might be true. <laughs> it definitely wouldn't surprise me if it is now. Now I'm gonna be schizo and keep checking all the Pokemon. Anyways. Back to the tutorial section. If you go to the left of this cavern and walk down this path, you will eventually run into a schizo moment. Okay. <laughs> the shiny on that has green or red eyes, so I'm very schizo when I check them. Because <laughs> you have to make sure you look at its eyes or else you're not going to be able to tell. And you will keep running until you reach this little tumble of rocks. There's actually a hidden cave in here. If you run in this cave and go keep running until you reach the... Unless a Pokemon appears. As I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, keep running until you reach this grassy section. You will be able to find a new Pokemon. Hopefully it'll show up so I can show you. It should be... Roaring Moon should be able to spawn in here. Where is he? Roaring Moon? Buddy? Come on. No time to be shy. <laughs> Please show yourself to the camera. Where are you, bro? There we go. There it is. There is Roaring Moon. After enough time running around, sim similarly to Sandy Shocks, it seems to be a very uncommon spawn. But if you just keep running around enough, you'll eventually run into it. Just keep refreshing spawns, running away from where they are, running back in. That way it's refreshing your spawns pretty consistently. I actually just remember that you can use Dusk Balls on this thing. Because it is technically in a cave. Didn't work that time. Okay, that's wonderful. It is in a cave. You can use Dusk Balls on Roaring Moon. It should prove to be more effective than just chucking Ultra Balls. It might be an annoying one to catch, but eventually you will get lucky and either get a crit catch or something will go right and you'll be able to catch it. Just like that. Perfect. Perfect timing, Roaring Moon. Thank you. But now that we've gotten Roaring Moon, that marks off quite a number of the Paradox Pokemon. This is the Paradox Salamence, obviously, Dragon Dark Typing. Really cool typing, kind of just stole High Dragons, but <laughs> still, really cool typing. There is only a couple more Paradox Pokemon to go, and for these next ones, you'll return to where the main area is, where we started this section. So you just run back over towards this research station. And then you go into the Great Crater. Or deep, the deep part of the Great Crater for our last couple. Now, multiple can spawn in here. Screamtail can also spawn in here. So that if you weren't able to get Screamtail in the grassy sections, you can still get it in here. There is one of them. You can get Great Tusk down here. As one of the Paradox Pokemon. This is one of the Dawn Fan Paradoxes, the ground fighting type, that you also met as the ground type Titan, depending on what version you were playing. 
Now, there is actually one other area where you can catch Great Tusk. Um, I am in the process of making a video about that, which is why you can see a Pokeball on that. It is going to be a video about how you can catch all of the Titan Pokemon. I will have it linked at the end of the video when it comes out. I will also have it linked in the description, so you can check it out there whenever you're done getting all the Paradox Pokemon. But there we go, that is Great Tusk that we just caught, and that leaves one more of the main Paradox Pokemon for Scarlet. I love it when they just jump me right out of battle, give me no breaks in between. Finally, there we go. Fluttermane can kind of spawn everywhere in the area. But it is much more common to be found towards the front part. For some reason it took me a minute to find one. But there we go. That is Fluttermane. The mischievous form that is a ghost and fairy typing. Quite an interesting typing if you ask me. Unfortunately the only downside is that the design's kind of plain. Because all they really did was make the hair pieces on mischievous a little bit longer. And just called that good enough. And that is all of the main Paradox Pokemon for Pokemon Scarlet. But there is actually one more secret one that you might not know about that you can catch in here. If you jump down towards, uh, let's just say on this big gem right here. We'll start here. And then if you run towards this area, you can actually see there is a Coridon sitting here in battle form. There is a, once you have beaten the second post-game story, you are able to catch a second Coridon, or Moridon, depending on your game, obviously, that you can use to either trade with someone else, or just have a separate one in battle form. That way you can still have your ride Pokemon separate. I'm gonna try and catch my, okay, never mind, Quick Ball is not going to work. Um... But yeah, that is the final Pokemon Scarlet one. Um, we are going to s very soon get into the Pokemon Violet Paradox Pokemon as soon as I catch this Coridon. I'm just going to use my Master Ball because there's not... There are the sub-legendaries, but I'm just... I want to get this over with, so I'm catching this in a Master Ball. That is Coridon. Obviously, you already have one, so it's not going to register to the decks when you catch it or anything. You can nickname it and just go ahead and send it to the box, which is what I'm doing. And then this little cutscene, I guess, plays afterwards where your ride Coridon is like, I guess, upset that you caught his rival or whatever. I don't know. I don't know exactly. And that's a Garganac that just jumped on top of him. Okay, it's gone. Okay, well, that is the Pokemon Scarlet ones. If you're done with the video now. Completely understand. I appreciate you watching, but if you want to stick around for the violet ones, we are about to start on that as well. Alrighty, we are here with the Pokemon Violet version exclusive paradoxes. Obviously, you're going to need to go to the zero gate in order to catch these. Again, thank you to those who continued watching. If you just skipped to this point, hi, welcome. If you are still watching from the Scarlet section, really appreciate you. But first place you're going to need to go, use this teleport point, and we are going to go to research station number one. Right outside this research station gives you access to quite a few of the Paradox Pokemon right off the bat. If we just step outside, hopefully at least they'll prove my point and show up immediately. Let's see if they do. Okay. Cool, they're not going to. Okay, I had to do quite a few fixes, but we are back. Um, as I was saying before, Iron Hands can be very commonly found. I've already caught some, so I'm going to leave him here. But this is kind of where you can find him in this general area. Similarly, you should be able to find the Iron Bundle, which is the Deli Bird Paradox form, just kind of hanging around in many areas of the air. What, what, what was I trying to say? You can just find them everywhere, pretty much down here. Now there is one more that is quite common for you to find, just in this grassy area. Um, hopefully it'll spawn for me, just so I can- there we go. I can talk about it. Iron Moth, you can find them very commonly just roaming around in this 
out area just like Iron Bundle and Iron Hands. So you can just kind of find them while you're roaming about. Easiest pie. Now we are going to go back and we are going to teleport to Research Station 2. This Pokemon is very similar to Sandy Shocks. It spawns pretty much in the exact same location with the exact same conditions if you were watching during the Scarlet section of this video. But if you weren't, it is this little rocky area over here where you can find Iron Thorns, the Tyranitar variant. It is an uncommon spawn, so unless you have a sandwich equipped, you will probably have to run around a few times and refresh the spawn until you eventually find him. After enough patience though, you will eventually see Iron Thorn spawns right over here. I'm not going to catch him, I already have a couple of them in my box, but here he is, ready to hang out, ready to be captured by you. Now I'm going to have you teleport to Research Station 3 for the next Paradox Pokemon, the Galatevoir, Galate, Iron Valiant, Galatevoir, whatever you want to call it. I'm calling it Galatevoir because that's just, it, it, it is. It's just Galatevoir. <laughs> As you can see, you see the big hole down to the deeper part of the crater, but we're going to ignore that for now. We are going to go to the left. At this point of the Scarlet side of things, I actually got a shiny. So go back in the video if you skipped it and go see it. If you did see it, kudos to you. But we will go down in this little set of rocks, go through this walkway. This is very similar to where you find Roaring Moon if you were, well, also we can talk about, I guess, Iron Jugulus. Iron Jugulus kind of just spawns pretty commonly most places. It more commonly spawns in the deeper part of the crater, but you can also find it in many caves such as this. Didn't, wasn't really meant to show off him, but, <laughs> you know, just while I'm here, I guess I'll talk about him a little bit. Goodness gracious, I swear this isn't where he's meant to be spawning all the play all the time. Galatevoir, similarly to Iron Thorns, is an uncommon spawn for this area. So we will just have to run around for a little bit until he eventually shows up. Or if you want to make it easier on yourself, you can set up a sandwich and just use that. But I'm stubborn, so I don't feel like using a sandwich right now. And there we go. We have Iron Valiant, aka Galatevoir, or whatever you want to call it. Spawning in this area is a psychic fighting type. It's a really cool Pokemon in my opinion. Really sleek design. Nice and edgy. Perfect. Uh, yeah. On to the next. So now for the rest, we are going to go down this, the great bigger crater, and just start going down. This is the area where you will be able to find the rest of the Paradox Mons. As I mentioned earlier, Iron Jugulus spawns in here. It kind of just spawns more or less everywhere that it's dark, which this actually only leaves us with one more Paradox Pokemon whenever it shows up, which is the counterpart to uh, Giant Tusk, the Dawn Fan. It is Iron Treads, the Dawn Fan, who it was also the Titan Pokemon that you fought for the Ground Titan. I don't remember the roaming earth titan. I don't remember what he was called, but he was also one of the titans He's found just randomly around in the cave areas uh, I'll come back to you when I finally find one. There we go. Finally, we have found an iron treads Which is was the titan. Well, not trying to show off iron hands. I guess he just decided to pop up No, no, the iron treads disappeared. No Well You, you saw him though, right? You saw- oh, he's still here. We're just gonna encounter him so that we can talk about him. Here he is. Uh, I don't know why he didn't do his battle animation, but... There is Iron Treads, the final of the main, uh, Paradox Pokemon. But there is one more secret Paradox Pokemon that you might not know about. Now, I talked about this in the Scarlet section of the video, but if you come to this section of the cave, down on the bottom path, walk up this. Normally you will find a Maridon right here. I have already caught it, so I can't show it to you here. But if you go back and look at the Scarlet section, I you can see where I caught the Coridon that stands here in Maridon's place. This just gives you a second one to either keep one to battle and keep your ride one as a ride Pokemon, 
or to have one to trade with a friend to get have both of them register your to your decks or whatever but that is all that i have for you today and if you enjoyed this video and are curious on another way to catch iron treads or great tusk there is a video linked on screen right now that shows you how you can catch every single titan pokemon in pokemon scarlet and violet thank you for watching this video i hope to see you there peace